So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assemble the DMM. And how you can tell it's the DMM, the one that goes inside the dome, it's actually cupped in this uh, direction like this. It's concave. Uh, the magnets themselves would have already done this take of rubbing alcohol. Let's see if I get that in the shot. Just regular run of the mill rubbing alcohol. And I've, I've cleaned the first magnet that I'm work, going to work with. And what you want to do is you want to test fit everything and make sure it fits. And if you look, it's a nice snug fit without any glue or anything. So that's how the magnet should fit in there. If your magnets aren't fitting like that on their own without any glue, uh, you may actually want to check your prints, your printer calibration, make sure everything's printing correctly. I've already gone through uh, and taken a quarter inch drill bit, run it through the middle really quick, and then made sure that these countersinks were nice and clean as well. Uh, and then I took a 964 drill bit and ran it through the actual screw holes. And I just want to make sure that in the end when I go to put my screws in, that they drop into place real easy. Uh, they don't have to be totally flush, they can stick out just a hair because uh, we do have a spacer in there so it's not a big deal if they stick out a hair. But the Gorilla Instant Glue, I'm, I'm fond of this, it works really well. I've never had any issues with it. So usually what I found works the best is I put a lot of glue all the way around the outside edge and then down on the bottom surface. So I pretty much coated here in this outside edge. And it's going to get a little bit messy, so be prepared for that. And then I'll take the magnet and I'll put it in place. I'll kind of run it in and out a little bit. And I'm doing that to make sure that the magnet itself gets really well coated with glue. And then I'll push it all the way in, make sure it's in. Slide the other magnet off the side, just like so. Now that's in there really solid. Now the first magnet it doesn't matter which direction you put it in. And then I'll just go ahead and clean up the extra glue. Be prepared to get a lot of glue on your fingers. And that's actually it for the first magnet. I'm going to press and make sure that it's all the way down in there. You want to make sure that they're all the way down in there because if they're sticking out or one's uneven, you may have issues later on with it you know, hitting the surface of the ball or something. So that's it for the first magnet. I'm actually going to go through, I'm going to let this sit for about a half an hour. I'm not going to use any accelerator or anything just because I want to make sure it has a good natural bond. But in about a half an hour I'll come back and then we'll glue that one. So for the second magnet we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the first. Uh, I've already gone ahead and I've cleaned this with alcohol. As you can see, the magnets are definitely strong. Uh, what you want to do is you want to check for uh, polarity. Once you get down to this size, uh, I mean, not they can hurt you, but they're not going to crush your finger or anything. I wouldn't suggest trying this with much bigger magnets. Uh, but in any case, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing the whole opposite, the first one. Uh, and we want to make sure that they should be trying to stick together. If they're trying to stick together, then you have them the correct orientation. So make sure these guys are moved really far away. And they do have the ability to uh, jump, for lack of better words. Uh, I've had them jump over a foot away. Same type of thing. We're going to completely fill or coat this back area, coat all the sides of the hole. Like I said, you will get sticky fingers. So, once again, double check polarity. That is going in the correct way. Same type of thing, kind of work the magnet in and out with the glue a little bit. And then I also found if you kind of twist a little bit as you put it in, it's good. Always make sure you get the extra magnets really far away. Clean off the extra glue, have the paper towel, stick to your fingers. I usually like to 
make sure I put a lot of pressure just to make sure that the magnet is uh, securely against the back side. And that's it for magnet number two. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll let that sit while we get the glue off of our fingers and clean up the mess. So with magnet number three and number four, they're going to be opposite polarity of these first two that we did. So when you take the magnets themselves, they should actually want to push away from the first two that we did. If you install them right, you should not be able to stick them to them. If they actually pull to one of these two first two that you've uh, put on there, one of two things is happening. Either A, you have the wrong these in the wrong direction, uh, or B, if it pulls to one of these and not the other, you've installed one of these improperly. You're going to have to take it out and fix it. So proper orientation for magnet 3 and 4 is these should push away. You should not be able to stick it to it. And that's the proper orientation. So same type of thing as the other magnets that we did. I'm going to flood this area with glue. Now one of the things that you'll notice that didn't happen on the first two magnets is it's actually going to suck itself down into the hole. So once again, just double check it before you stick it in there. And the magnet itself will actually want to suck down into the hole, so you're not going to be able to move it in and out too much. And press it down into place. And how I've designed this with the alternating polarities, what happens is, is the, the magnetic uh, field, for lack of better words, does this. And that's the reason why it'll suck itself down into the hole. And it's kind of nice because once you actually get to the fourth magnet, you'll see that it really wants to stay in there. So they'll hold themselves into this container. So that's it for uh, magnet number three. We're going to let that dry for you know, another half an hour or so, uh, and then at that point we'll come back and glue in the final magnet. Okay, so the fourth and final magnet, same type of thing as the other three. The difference is we're going to want to push off of these two and attract to this one to make sure we have the polarity in the right direction. So it's pushing off of there, pushing off of there, and pulling to there. So it's perfect. We've got it assembled correctly so far. Let's scoot these back. Remember, at this point, you really can't use too much glue uh, because in the end, the glue is the only thing holding the magnets in there. So you're much better using an abundance of glue and making sure these guys never slip out. Now, every magnet structure I've ever done on my BB-8, which I've run for a lot of driving hours right now, has been built the exact same. So you do not have to worry about these guys coming out over time. So, retract, uh, uh, opposes, opposes, and attracts. So that is correct. And what you'll find is this last one actually sucks itself into the hole. I'm not pushing at all. It's wanting to suck itself in. You can see it slipping through my fingers. See? So you're not going to be able to pull this one in and out really. Teeny tiny bit. Just get the glue worked on there, and that one's in there. Press them into place, and I did clean it up with alcohol as normal, which you always want to do because you never know. You never know if there's a little bit of uh, oil on there from production of the magnet. You could definitely run into issues with the magnets not staying and. Um, Anything that you could do to possibly make these things stick a little bit better, you're better off doing it that way. And those are in there. So, from the standpoint of uh, the magnets for the DMM, that's all there is to it as far as getting them glued in. You're going to want to let these guys sit in here. I, I think the dry time on this, it says only something like uh, 10 seconds. Um, Reality, I always let them sit for quite a few hours before I actually do any sort of testing. 
because it may be 10 to 15 seconds for the initial bond, but full strength isn't achieved until quite a few hours later. When you get around to doing the BMM, uh, the body magnet mount, it's going to be the exact same thing that we did here, where you're going to have uh, these two will match polarity, these two will be opposite of these two. So for lack of better words, plus negative, plus negative, same type of thing. Work a magnet, let it dry, opposite, let it dry, uh, and just work your way all the way around. So that's pretty much all there is to actually getting the magnets uh, assembled into the units themselves. It may not look like much, but this is a very strong little assembly. Don't let it fool you. It will do the job. I wanted to give you an explanation on how the casters are put together, uh, but at the same time I want to get the files out to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply explain it without being able to really demonstrate it. We do have a manual that's going to be following you about a week and a half or so. Uh, that'll give you a little bit more detailed explanation, but at least this will get you moving down the path. The tires themselves are actually printed out of Ninja Flex, uh, and I print them solid 100%. Uh, the uh, inner hub of the, of the wheel itself uh, is a solid print, and these arms are actually solid print as well. There is a nylon piece. Uh, which goes around the axle. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it. You can barely see it down in there. You can see the uh, the edge of the nylon piece which goes uh, inside of the wheel and this is what allows it to spin on the axle smoothly. There's no actual bearings in this. It's all nylon uh, shims or bushings. And then there are two other smaller, you can see them black nylon there as well on each side. So the one in the center uh, which is glued to the wheel itself is what allows the wheel to spin smooth. Sorry, went off camera a little. Which is what allows the wheel to spin smooth. The black ones on the side are what pretty much keeps it centered. And I actually have a, a tiny bit of intentional play in there. I found out that if the wheel is can't move enough side to side or is too stiff, it doesn't rotate as easy on the body. So having a tiny bit of uh, side to side play in the wheel, not a lot, actually does help out quite a bit. So through everything, you have a three millimeter axle. I don't know if we're staying in focus here. Kind of in focus, sorry. Um, three millimeter axle that goes uh, through here, through the bushings and out the other side. And this I just simply put a, a drop of glue on to hold it in place. I pushed it all the way through with the exception of, uh, you know, actually having it stick out a tiny bit put a little bit of glue on it and slid it back in. Uh, and all it does is just, the glue just simply keeps it from sliding back out again. But you don't want to put glue on before because then you'll have glue inside your axle and it's not going to spin at all. The post itself is a four millimeter post and there's a hole in the top of the caster, a uh, little bit of glue, shove it down in there until it, until it stops. Um, and that's, that's about it. I mean, the caster itself is put together. Uh, this is just another uh, four millimeter uh, nylon washer, which I explained in another video. Uh, that just simply gets put on there. I put a drop of glue underneath it, not on top because you don't want it to gunk up the surface, uh, but between the caster itself and the nylon. And that's just how when I pull the caster off, these don't you know, fall off and get lost. That's about it. Uh, so that's it for the casters. Uh, there's three of them, uh, relatively easy to make, like I said. Solid print, solid print for the uh, for the app, for the uh, wheel, and then uh, solid print for the Ninja Flex tire. There are two main pieces as far as the attachments to the dome. There's a lower piece which we call the caster mount, and an upper piece which is the head mount. Uh, each of those consists of four separate pieces. You'll have a center hub piece and a total of three legs. For the lower portion of it, the caster portion of it. The orientation of the center hub really doesn't matter. For the upper, uh, it is actually very important. These tabs which you see on here are actually for zip ties. And when you put the legs in place, they'll end up going in this type of orientation. So the zip ties are up with the leg going down. I've already gone through and prepped this piece. Uh, pretty much I've gone through with a uh, nine, let me check really quick. Yep, sorry, 964 drill bit, uh, cleaned out these holes for the screws to go through easy. I took a half an inch drill bit, cleaned that out, 
just to make sure that our D-hub would go, you know, flush into here. When you're gluing these guys in, what you're going to want to do is completely flood the joint. And just one quick side note, I actually sanded this a little bit and sanded the top of the legs a little bit. Uh, the reason why is we're going to completely flood the joint. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, essentially pound the leg into place until it's completely flush on the top side. So when you sand it, sand just enough to take off any high ridges, but not enough to actually change uh, the height of the piece itself. So place this guy down, put the leg in. You want to make sure that this here is exactly flat and I literally can't feel a seam. So you're going to go through, you're going to repeat that on the other two legs and that's essentially how you're going to assemble the upper and the lower uh, portion of the mount. Like I said, the lower portion as far as uh, the alignment of this or the orientation of this uh, doesn't matter. For the upper, make sure that you've got these tabs in this type of a position. Otherwise, uh, let the legs sit for a little bit so it can fully harden up. I usually give it about a half an hour. Uh, then after that, repeat for the next two legs and then do the exact same thing for the lower caster assembly. For mounting the upper head mount, just simply slip it through the hole and then use three 440 screws that you've countersunk with just a simple nut on the back side. For the lower caster mount, it's simply uh, assembled just like the head mount where you have three 440 screws that are countersunk in with a single nut on the back side holding it in place. Uh, the nylon inserts here, uh, what you want to do is just make sure that the smooth side is uh, where the caster is going to ride and at the same time make sure it's flush with the arm and then just take a razor blade and cut it off on the back side. There's two ball bearings which are countersunk into the structure top and bottom. Uh, if they don't fit completely flush, they should only stick out about a millimeter at most. Uh, if anything, take your, your drill bit and uh, move it down to flush them in a little bit, just be a half inch drill bit. Once this is assembled to here and these nylon pieces are in, the casters themselves, uh, more or less what they do is they ride on this nylon bushing right here and it's important that that is larger than this hole that way it doesn't press through. These just simply go through the hole and then this little rubber guy it's only goal in life is to keep the caster from falling off. And that's it for the assembly on the main portion. You take your magnet assembly you're going to take the D shaft, you're actually going to mount it to the D hub first before you attach it to the magnet assembly. Tighten it down as tight as you possibly can, then slide it into place and just use two screws to hold it into place. At that point, that's assembled. Now, on top of this, you'll be able to put these little quarter inch inner diameter shims. And what these will do is these will actually move the magnet assembly up and down. So you'll be able to move the magnet assembly by adding the shims like this. And what it does is it moves it closer and further away from the ball. So depending upon how heavy your head is, how rough the ball is, things like that, you'll want to adjust this. And that's going to be a bit of trial and error to get it right. If it's too close, the head's actually going to ride really rough on the ball because it gets sucked into every little nook and cranny. And if it's too far away, the head's going to fall off. So it's really a balancing act. And believe it or not, the difference of a millimeter is huge sometimes. So once that's on there, now what you can do is you can put the same type of spacer on the top. Now, it's actually designed to have one spacer on there. But if your head itself is not completely flat, what you can do is you can add a second spacer. What that'll do is that'll move the head up a tiny bit. It's designed so that way this gap here and the gap between the head and the lower ring match. So one shim will make that match. Like I said though, if your head isn't flat, you can put on two shims. And then the head, what you'll do is you'll take additional shims and you'll put them between the mount and the head itself 
to move the bracket up. And by doing that, what that'll do is that'll essentially adjust the head on the ring in different angles. Once you have that adjusted, and I'm sure you'll end up putting it on and off several times to get it right, this guy just simply slips into place, like so, and then you'll tighten down that nut. Now, one thing to mention, BB-8's head, if it's too loose, will actually do almost like he's shaking his head no. So what will happen is your servo or your motor will turn it, he'll go to the turning point, but then it'll do this a little bit. So how we stop that, pull this back off, is you'll actually take, uh, I use this stuff which they call pick and, uh, <laughs> peel and stick felt. Uh, I got it in I think Michael's fabrics. And you're going to just take a little piece of it and what you're going to do is you're going to attach it onto this tab on all three different tabs. And then when you push your head down, I don't want to stick it on right now because I still have to paint. When you push the head down, that'll do a couple different things. First thing it'll do is it'll make sure that this gap is exactly even because it'll put a tiny bit of pressure on the head one way or the other to even it out. The second thing it does is actually gives it resistance. So when you stop, the head will actually not want to shake. No, it'll just stop it in place. What I found from a good starting point as far as how much you want to be able to spin, if you were to take his head and spin it, you want to be able to do about one rotation before it slows down on its own. Now, what you'll notice is that Make sure this is pressed together good. Without the shim on there, when I spin this, it will continue to spin for a really long time. And you can see even I still have some adjusting to do. But that's all there really is to uh, putting BB-8's head together. Super easy to put together. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Thanks. Enjoy. Bye.